the hearse. Just enough moonlight covered in drifting clouds to generate eerie silhouettes reflected all around, the dark shadows between scattered street lamps, and also the occasional front porch step that is lit with jack-o'-lanterns, the candles flickering, dance together, creating fanciful demons behind trees. Having said goodnight to my friend a few doors down, I walk on home alone, not frightened, yet. Crazy winds and fits and starts, gusts whip my hair, blurring my already strained vision, pace quickens. It's the kind of wind that creeps along the surface of the earth, gathering the fallen leaves in a chain that wraps around my feet, legs beginning to buckle. Do I hear footsteps or the echoes of my own rhythm? Clicking on my heels upon the sidewalk, tick tock, heartbeat pounding now, nearly breaking my ribs. I must stop, turn myself around, face my pursuer, or acknowledge my runaway imagination, nothing. Instead, my fearful eyes do spy distant headlights, and my ears hear the grumble of an antique engine, the labored existence of an entity of a certain age. Not another soul around, not even the proverbial black cat to cross my path, no one taking out trash. I propel myself forward, creepy notions fill my head. Each time I glance behind me at the approaching vehicle, it appears closer, then farther, then closer. An optical illusion, delusion, or the devil's trickery. Suddenly, half blink of an eye, it is right beside me, pulled up to the curb. It's a hearse with curtains and tinted windows and a spit shine that glimmers in what little light is refracted by pumpkin candles, street lamps, and scattered moonlight through clouds. The hearse is old, but presents itself as brand new. I'm full-on terrified now, eyes frozen on the glass. No other sound is audible at all but the lowering passenger side window. It seems to last forever. I see the hand first, his veins running red with lava. A wave of arid heat escapes its dark containment, with enough force to make me stumble backwards, gaze never leaving the frightening scene before me. The driver leans over. He's finally in my line of vision. In his eyes I see the flickering flames of hell's fires with the muted moans of tortured souls embedded. My attempted scream is dissolved by the arid wind. He asks if I need a lift. Get in, but it's not a question. I no longer even have control over my emotions. Another half blink of an eye, and I'm shoveling coal.